G'day, how you going? Last week we we treated your right elbow for some golfer's elbow pain. That was the first time, yeah. Yep. So how how does it feel now? It feels a lot better, a lot freer. I feel like I can move my elbow a lot more without pain now. And what were you saying to me just before we start recording um, about hitting? So, so you went you went hitting after last week with wet balls or something? Yeah, yeah. So yesterday it was raining, and um, you know probably shouldn't have done it, but yeah, definitely I, don't do that. But thought that I should hit. Just to I, test it out. Yeah, I've had a test. Um, yeah. And I hit for about two hours with just solid hitting and no pain at all. In the wet? In the wet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Who were you hitting with? Uh, one of my lessons. Like, okay. So a good, but a good player. Okay, cool. Yeah. Well, let's let's do some testing and I'll get you, I'll get you to rank it out of 10, okay? So there's there's three tests I normally do for, for golfer's elbow and we'll, we'll do some tennis elbow tests on you as well just for the sake of, of the video. But the first one I call the arm wrestle test. So if you bring your arm up as if we're going to arm wrestle, I'll support you here. Just just resist me. Is there any pain? There is a little bit of pain. Yeah. Okay. So usually people will be sensitive for pain here if it's if it's a golfer's elbow or medial epicondylitis pain. Out of ten, how much would you rate that? Oh, Less than five. Yeah, probably like a four, maybe. Do you remember what you would have scored it last week? Oh, I would have. Like, I, I, I actually don't think I would have been able to do okay. any of that. So it would have. Been, I forget. I forget. It would have been maybe a nine. I think. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's pretty significant. Yeah. Okay, so now arm um, like this. So this is resisted wrist flexion. So his his wrist is in flexion. I'm going to try to extend it, and I'm pulling mostly through the pinky and the ring finger to target flexi carpi ulnaris. Any pain with that one? No. None whatsoever. And that's somewhere I did find a lot of pain before. Like if I was resisting, resisting that, but now I've got no pain. Yeah. Okay. And then the last one is um, we do this tapping. So keep your arm really floppy. Let me hold it up for you. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, that's it. So I'm going to tap right at the medial epicondyle. This is usually pretty sensitive or sore. Is that sore? Yeah. Out of 10? Probably a five when you do that. Yeah. Okay. So it was three out of 10 for the arm wrestle. Oh, nothing. Nothing. For the next the one. one. Yeah. And then um, five out of ten for tap. That usually is the most sensitive one. Mm. So that that's the hardest one to get rid of. When this starts going down to like one or two out of ten, I'm happy that it's it's mostly resolved because it is it's sore just to tap on anyone a lot of the time. Um, so then I, I always get stuck into doing the active release technique and. When you learn active release technique, they tell you to do it just skin on skin with no um, no cream or anything like that, but I do it with cream, so I just think it's more comfortable for the patient. So in this position, the, the common flexor tendons will be in their shortest state, so elbow flexion, pronation, and wrist, um, wrist flexion. Yeah, so you usually get around like this, don't you? Yeah, all the time. <laughs> Okay. All right. So straight. Just doing the opposite of that. So I'll I'll uh, extend the elbow, supinate the forearm, and extend the the fingers and the wrist. And how does how does that feel? Is it sore or? It's a bit sore, but like up here it gets sore where I rub into yeah, that. Yeah. It's not um. Out of yeah. ten soreness is it? Oh, it's only maybe a four. Doesn't really. If we that. if we get up to like a six. Maybe seven out of ten discomfort. That's usually a good range to operate in. So I think that's what it would have been like last, last week. week. Yeah. And if it's if it's getting better, then yeah, you don't try to get to six out of ten discomfort on the patient. Just work with them and ask them, how does that feel? Is that good or bad? So I'll be getting uh, pronator teres. Uh, Flexor digitorum superficialis profundus. Oh, I forget my anatomy, but yeah, common flexor tendons. Uh, and in a moment, we'll go into uh, FCU, uh, flexor carpi ulnaris, not FU. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, how does it? You've got a fair bit of bulk in through here, like, I mean, 
a high level tennis player, but um, you'd expect that. I mean, you also played a fair bit of golf too, didn't you? Yeah. So, a lot of, lot of work in through these tendons. Um, and I'll just, I'll just work through these until I feel like he's had enough. Um, is that a bit sore there, around the edge? Yeah, just a little bit. It's not it's bearable. So this is, this is right on that origin, right up against the bone there. It does feel tight on you, like whipping forehands like it is, you yeah. know, it'd serve you just to stretch, like your, your elbow doesn't, it, it comes into full extension, but it's, it's quite tight. So, mm. you know, you should do a lot of that sort of stretching. And actually while I'm doing the active release technique, I will do a lot of um, elbow mobs, like moving it into medial and lateral glide. I might just sort of shear the distal radio ulna joint, flex and extend the wrist. Actually, if you just lean back a bit there, here you go. That's, that's an adjustment I've done on you before, mm. isn't it? Like, yeah. Um, so I don't know if you heard that one pop, you probably didn't, but um, I just uh, sort of extended the, the distal radio, the RU joint, radio ulna joint. Um, all these sort of modes just help loosen up the the uh, the forearm tendons. If it was golfer's elbow, uh, sorry, tennis elbow, the tests I would do: hold your hand out like this, with your fingers spread apart. I want you to resist through here. This is a basic muscle test. No pain, nothing. Okay. Wrist up now. This is resisted wrist extension. So I'm going to try and flex his wrist, he's trying to extend it, is there any pain there, the lateral epicondyle, nothing, and then just rest your arm on my hand here, I find the lateral epicondyle and I tap it. What about here, in, in somebody that, that has no tennis elbow whatsoever, do you feel any pain? No. Okay, well there you go, you shouldn't feel any pain even when I tap the tendon up against the bone. Um, if, it, if it was a tennis elbow, I would do a similar sort of ART maneuver. Um, the elbow is in flexion, this time supination and wrist extension. I take my contact and then perform a movement opposite to its line of contraction and, and strip the joint. And probably on you, I mean, this, this even feels good anyway, doesn't mm. it? Like, just um, again, being a tennis player, I can just feel it's tight there. Yeah, it's just, that, yeah. just tightness. And it wouldn't, wouldn't be a waste of time treating this on you either because, you know, it's just going to. It's just going to unload the, the forearm. Again, there's, there's quite a bit of muscle mass here. Um, I'd say more so than your left arm, like your right arm's your stronger one, right? Mm. Yep, definitely. Um, so the, the tennis elbow muscles are extensor carpi radialis, longus and brevis. So longus comes all the way up to the middle finger, which is why we do that middle finger resistant uh, test and then uh, brevis comes to some point on the wrist and extends there. So if you're testing both of those muscles and there's pain or discomfort, there's there's probably a degree of inflammation or, or irritation um, to those to those tendons. So that's. Uh, that's about it for the ART. That I, oh, sorry, we've got to do flex carpi ulnaris. So this one, you're going to have your hand like this. Okay, keep your wrist flex. I'm going to flex the elbow. Then I'm going to extend your wrist. So let, let your wrist relax here. Yeah. And I'm just going to supinate in through there. So come into this position with the wrist flexed. It's quite, it's quite hard, this position. It's kind of a weird position. So you want to be like this. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so keep your wrist where it is. Now, Flex the elbow, extend your wrist, and then twist it. Okay, just a few more passes on flexi carpa ulnaris. Uh, you said you could feel this one a bit. Mm. Yep. Yeah, like it's, it's a bit more tender, like down here. Yeah, it's yep. probably more like a four. Okay. Yeah. okay, so if you have a look here, you can see he's got this mark on his skin. Um, Andrew's been using one of these uh, forearm guards. You can see in here, it's got this little um, cushion. 
I think the idea of that is when it's um, when it's on the on the muscle, it sort of depresses the tendons. So uh, without it, when he hits a forehand like this, it, it will tug right at the the origin. Whereas if you if you depress the tendon there, it's only going to tug from from where he's pinned it. It's not going to irritate there. And the same goes for like if it was tennis elbow and. I, I guess I've, I've heard mixed reports with, with these sorts of bands. There's so many on the market, but I do actually think they, they make a bit of sense. And you said it's, it's helped you, yeah? Well, what I feel is that it definitely restricts the tendon. So it's, you can't move so them. So you can't move them as much. So yeah. then you get slightly less pull on that. But point. you wouldn't be able to rip your forehand as much. Well, I mean, you can try, but yeah. It, but it's not going to be as free as without so yeah i probably wouldn't at the moment anyway like be trying to hit it that hard yeah. just because of yeah my elbow is sore so so it does restrict your ability and, to, to play freely yeah you say i've never used one yeah. so yeah um okay so once we've done that we're going to do some grass and technique on you now so lie down on your back with your head up this end with grass and technique you definitely want some sort of emollient or you know lubricant whatever i always use physio cream because it's for one, it's natural, and uh, two, it's uh, it's an anti-inflammatory for muscles and joints. So, may as well get a double whammy. Um, and I just keep a towel on hand just to clean my hands periodically. And I've got three three tools here. I've got GT3. I call this the ice pick because you can hack at tissue. I've got GT4 and. This one, GT2. This one, I don't know that I'll have much effect on Andrew with this one. Sometimes it's good to get in here, but he's got, oh, it'll kind of work. He's got pretty big forearms, so um, say on a smaller individual, this concave surface can kind of cup and, and mold to the person's um, common flexor on origin better. But I think, I think with Andrew being a bigger guy, a big, stronger guy, we actually want this convex surface so it comes more to a point and uh, I mean does this one feel any different to the other one does it feel sharper or um, I can just feel that it's rough that's yeah. what I'm feeling so it's kind of a weird sensation yeah. getting treated like this isn't it like it feels grisly and like ripples yeah but it, feel, it does feel good though I can actually feel my fingers moving yeah you can from. see up here as i like you're not putting that on are you no um and hopefully what you can see as well is a bit of redness did you have that band on pretty tight did you yeah because it's really sticking around this yeah yeah well I, I was hitting for about two hours this morning so okay yeah. so i'm really really fighting against it here and um not only does he have somewhat of an injury but he's also basically doing a lot of what he shouldn't be but this is reality right you uh i didn't actually tell you not to play though did i no i did i just i didn't waste my breath i guess no <laughs> so i'll do this just for a little bit um just got to be careful going at this for too long because it is it can be a bit not traumatic on the skin but you just get as a patient you get a bit tired of it you're like okay that's enough this is it's a bit uncomfortable. I'm just trying to knead tissue here. Just get in there and get the blood happening. It is, it is coming. You can see it's getting a bit red. And then I'll just go a bit more focal um, around the uh, the common flexor origin. Is that sore there? Just on the. Every now and then I hit a spot. Yeah. Yeah. It's not sore, yeah, like there. Like right on the sore. bone. Yeah. yeah. What about in here? That feels a bit. Yeah, like, that's not too be. bad. It's okay. Yeah. Okay, and that's probably enough, and then I'll just sort of smooth it over a bit. Getting in here, like this is a pronator quadratus, is it? Or pro pronator? I think quadratus is in your hip. Anyway, there's some muscle in here that pronates your forearm. Again, I forget, but like that feels like a deep mm. sort of release, doesn't it? Yeah. Just in there. Yeah. Uh, and again, like 
just sort of stretching, stretching out. We're trying to stimulate tissue here and, and get it feeling better. So now we're going to go and do some dry needling. But these are brand new needles. I've just unpacked them. I haven't used them with my mates last night or anything like that at a party. Just shift it over a little bit. Okay. So we want to, again, this is all about stimulating tissue. Needles are great for increasing blood flow and relaxing tight tissue. So I'm going to try and get close to the common flexor origin here on the lateral epicondyle. Okay, how are you with that one? Yeah, good. Could you feel it? Not really. No. Okay, and traveling along uh, the common flexor muscles now. Pronator teres the uh, flexor digitorum superficialis profundus, flexor carpi ulnaris, uh, not necessarily in that order. Okay, and these are what we call peristructural needles, so they're going into muscles not into joints or joint capsules. So we'll leave these for about five minutes. And um, how do they feel? Can you feel them? I can feel them, but it feels very relaxing. It's kind of like a, a dull, very dull sort of um, sensation sensation in the arm. And the, but the muscles feel like very relaxed now. Do they feel heavy? Sometimes it, yeah, your arm can feel like a lead weight. Yeah, I mean, it feels feels fine. It just feels more relaxed. If I go like this, can you feel that? Yeah. And and I always sort of joke around a little bit with patients saying if, you know, probably best not to wiggle your fingers, but if you are slightly sadistic and you want to feel that sensation, you can wiggle your fingers and, uh, you know, you'll definitely feel the needles. Are you up for doing that? or oh, yeah. You don't have to. Yeah. Yeah, I can feel them. Yeah, you can see them. It's kind of cool. But... And you know, perhaps it isn't such a bad thing doing this. You know, if if you can't feel them, because again, it's it's stimulus. It reminds the the muscles that they're actually there. But yeah, probably best not to do it on purpose. Okay, so these needles have been in for just over five minutes. So we're going to take them out. Sometimes people will feel these coming out. Do you feel these? I can feel it, but it's not painful. Yeah. Okay. okay, so now we're going to do the cold laser therapy on him. And I'll explain how this works in a moment, but we always need to do a safety check first, and that is uh, a list of questions. Is there any chance you could uh, be... Um, uh, sorry, are you um, epileptic? Or do you suffer photosensitivity? No. Have you had any cancer? No. Do you have any cancer right now in no. your body? No organ transplants? No. Do you have any tattoos? No. Uh, if, you, if you had a tattoo here, but I'm lasering here, it doesn't matter. You just don't want a tattoo where the, um, where the treatment area is because the, the laser will heat up the ink and that'll, be, that'll burn. And then finally, is there a chance you could be pregnant? No. Right, good. Coming right onto the flexor origin. So what we should be calling this is photobiomodulation therapy. Photo meaning light, bio meaning life, and modulation meaning to either stimulate or inhibit. So with laser therapy, we're always either trying to stimulate tissue repair or inhibit pain. And with this particular probe and the settings on the laser, we're trying to stimulate tissue repair. Um, what I'll also do is I will do an area behind his neck because that is the, the area where the nerves exit the spinal canal and travel down to supply the upper limb. And we should also do an area in through the uh, where the lymph nodes are for the, um, for the upper limb because that will assist in, in reducing any inflammation. Any inflammation caused from medial epicondylitis. So this is the most anti-climax part of the treatment because Andrew won't be feeling anything. Do, do you feel anything? No. At the most, you'll feel a mild warmness, um, but, but usually it's nothing. And 
being a hands-on, a very hands-on practitioner, this was quite a leap of faith I took in, in um, utilizing this sort of therapy. Although it wasn't a leap of faith, there's, there's plenty of research to show that cold laser has been instrumental in, in helping people with not only um, musculoskeletal injuries, but uh, numerous diseases. There are many dentists now in Australia and around the world using cold laser therapy for the treatment of oral mucositis, which is an awful condition of the mouth, which you don't want, um, but has had excellent results. And there's also been a number of um, high profile athletes who've used cold laser therapy for recovery from training, namely Justin Gatlin, um, Mo Farah. These are just some of the, the big names who've experienced um, stellar results from using cold laser therapy. So this is the area of the neck. We'll do we'll do about six. We'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. Seeing as he's here, we may as well give him the full service and we'll adjust him as well. Uh, so he says he feels like his hips are out of place, so we'll try and uh, rectify that situation. How's it feeling here? Uh, sore, like down the bottom. Bit nasty in here? Mm. That's a spot there that doesn't want to move. Does that feel tight to you? Yeah. 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 Ideally, his heel would be able to touch his backside. You right with this pressure? Yep. Which hip has been bugging you more? Um, well, it's more the pain that it causes to my lower back. Okay. Like that's what I feel. Has it been one side, or were you just you've just felt like your your back's been sore across? It's been tight, sore, and it's hard to bend down. Not not to one side though. Um, the lower back hasn't been sore on one side? Um, or would you just say just, just generally? Just generally, it's just yeah. sore, yeah. Okay. I think the right side might be the culprit, that's why yeah. I ask. Um, so let's, let's get you lying on your left side for me. Okay, bend this top knee. This adjusted pretty well last week, didn't mm. it? Yeah. Sometimes you can be difficult to treat, difficult to adjust. Oh, well, sorry. Okay, you're right here. Yep. Breathe in, breathe out. Got it. Okay. Flip on the other side. So that that one adjusted. I was throwing money out of skip. Pooping um, money. You need to keep that. Don't spend it all at once. I was going to give it to me. Dollar fifty. This is this is the biggest coin in Australia. Did you get it? Is this one, are you filming this? I got that. This is the biggest coin in Australia. It's a fifty cent piece. Did I'm just trying it? to understand. For our international viewers. Oh, okay. Okay, bend here a little bit. I think it is the biggest coin, isn't it? Yeah, it is. yeah definitely. Okay. Uh, 
breathe in, breathe out. Go on in. Okay, lie on your back there. So yeah, not very audible, but uh, you felt that yeah, on both definitely. sides. So yep. that's a good result on you because, yeah, as I said, sometimes it, it can be hard to adjust you. So I would say more than likely this right shoulder is going to feel yeah, a bit constricted here. Give you a right hand up. Bit of clicking there too, actually. Mm. Okay, breathe in, breathe out. Oh, that one's not budging. I'm just going to try from the other side here. Okay, folding here. Okay, breathe in, breathe out. That one went. That was easy. A bit nasty there. Yeah, a bit tight. Tight, yeah. And up there too. Can you okay here? Yep. Okay, here? Yep. Got it. Okay, let's get you standing facing the mirror for me. Okay, take a few steps forward there for me. Uh, one more for me. That's it. Okay, give me yourself up back here. Just drop your chin to your chest, bend forward just a little bit, that's it. Okay, you're good here? Mm -hmm. Breathe in, breathe out. Okay, I got you. Okay, you want me to try this one? Yep. Okay, hands on top of your head. So that one there was that bit I pushed on in your middle back when I said there's a spot there and that'll help you so yeah okay your hands on my hands just drop down a little, yeah that's it breathe in breathe out okay I got you here look up There you go. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Yeah, thanks, mate. Good on you.